Hello, I'm so blessed to be here with you bringing God's truth and today is Friday, praise God. I told you yesterday, spend at least one hour. Tell you, I can't pray in tongues, so start, just start. Start first, target one hour. And the more you do it, the more you increase. The more you do it, the more you increase. Praise God. Yeah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive utterance from heaven, even right now. Thank you, Lord, because you will not hold back anything that shall be profitable to us today. And I receive freely from you, and so I give. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Man, praise God. Now, we, we stopped yesterday in verse 5. Yeah, it says, it's better you prophesy than speak with tongues, except you interpret. The reason is so that the church will be edified. That's what he's saying. So everything you do must end up with edifying the church. Now, look at verse 6. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongue, what shall I profit you? Now, Paul is addressing this because these were things that people were doing then in the church, just like people do today. See, people take these things um, rascally sometimes. And without submitting themselves to the Spirit of God. So he says, Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak unto you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? That's the only way I'll benefit you. Not just speaking in tongues. He says, And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall we know what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet gives give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? You know what was talking about. You know then, you know when they want to go to war, when when an announcement is going to be made, you you hear. Now, if you've ever lived in a military barrack before, yeah, you will understand that. You know there are certain times you hear the trumpet. Pam, 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 pam. Now, sometimes, the, every hour, the trumpet sounds. See? You know what I'm talking if you live around the military um, area before. You, you hear the trumpet sound at every hour. Or sometimes, sunset and sun, you know, sun, sun, sunrise and sunset comes by the sound of the trumpet. And that's, you know, so, so then Paul is saying, if, if it gives an uncertain sound. Now, if you study the sounds of those trumpets, you will know which one is playing. You will know. Just like some of us that have these alarm clocks at home, at different hour, it gives a, a sound. Now, some play music and then he now counts the, hour, the hours. Now, some of you are so used to it that once you hear the music, you know this is 12 o'clock. This is two o'clock. Why? Because you understand that sound. Every of the sound is distinct. That's what Paul is saying. Now he says, all right, verse eight. And if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. He is talking to you ministry now because sometimes people get crazy. You're going out for evangelism and then you go, I've come to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. And whoosh, ah, I'm so full of the Holy Ghost now. Okay, okay. And you finish all that. Say, ah, this thing, you, you just have to understand what I'm saying. You just have to. He is not understanding nothing. <laughs> Praise God. And he's looking at you like, okay, please God, where would this guy leave me alone? <laughs> See, you're not benefiting them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Verse 10. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Powerful scripture. 
There are what so many sounds in the world, so many voices in the world, and everyone is carrying a distinct sound. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a, ba a barbarian unto me. If I don't understand the meaning of a sound, I'm a barbarian to the sound. doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it just means that I'm a stranger to the sound, and the sound is a stranger to me. See, So you don't force sounds on people. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts. Now, you, you see in all these places where gift is mentioned, is in italics. I told you that when we started verse 12. Meaning, the translators put added it there. So, he is saying, even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual, you know, the spiritual realm. As you are zealous about the spiritual realm. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Be a blessing to people. You know, like they used to say, don't be heavenly relevant and earthly irrelevant. <laughs> you see, there are people like that. Or oh, every time you meet them, oh, show, rekebe, yagada. That's all. Hey, oh, brother, how are you? Robozo, <laughs> sayakata. You know, okay. He, he he's not being he's not edifying anybody. He's just he's just edifying himself. And he goes, I feel I feel so. Oh, I, I, you know you know just like you know, I feel, oh man, the, the anointing of God is so strong upon my life. Now okay, so wonderful. You know you know we have to um, come to this understanding. The evidence that the spirit of God is in a place is when people can hear his voice. It's not the falling, you know, for everybody fell under the power. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit was there. See, he wasn't. If everybody fell under the power, they are all shaking and crying and, oh, hey, you know, you know, you know have, you, have you gone for those meetings? And, they, oh, 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 oh. and then people start confessing and confessing. I killed somebody. Oh, I'm, I, I fornicated. I did this. People say, oh, that man, the spirit of God was in that meeting. Hey, hey, be careful. Be careful. Did you receive the word of the Lord? That's what you should look out for, not all the drama going on. All the drama going on may just be in response of the wind. Not him. The wind may come, but he's not in the wind. You remember um, Elijah. He was waiting for the Lord. And he has asked the Lord to show. And then the Bible says, it's a wild wind came. But the Lord was not in him. But the wild wind came. Now, why would he look for God in the wild wind? Because it's possible God was in that wild wind. But that particular one, God was not in there. The earthquake came. He wasn't there. And then there was a still small. Now, that doesn't mean God only speaks by a still small. You remember one time Jesus was with the disciples, with the crowd. And Jesus prayed a prayer. And then God spoke from heaven. And then the, some people there heard the sound. And they said, oh, it thundered. Others said, I think an angel spoke to him. And then Jesus said, that voice did not come for me. It came for you. See, now, God spoke. People heard it audibly. Now, some who are not connected to God, they still heard something. And what did they hear? They heard the sound of the thunder. So in them, in their ears, what they heard was thunder the same way they hear when it's, when it's about to rain. And imagine hearing the sound of thunder. I look around, the sun is just blazing high and, and okay. But some who are godly that seem to recognize the sound, but I'm not sure. So I think an angel spoke to him. But the one who was listening for the voice, Jesus himself, said, God just spoke to you. Praise God. So that's how it works. So don't get carried away by all those noise. Don't get carried away by all those shaking, all those falling. You know, we were praying and then the whole place was shaking. Yes! After the shaking, what next? If there is no voice of God, 
God was not in that place. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. So when you have such an experience, what should follow? A deep revelation from the Spirit of God must come forth. If God's going to come in all that drama, then He must be coming with something big and something new. Something that's going to take you guys to a new level. Praise God. And sometimes you're praying like that and you feel the unction so strong in your heart. You can't feel all that unction and then all you now hear, my son, fear not. I am with you. I am with you. Don't be afraid. I already know that. Except you didn't know it before. Now, now, I have to, I, you know, I've, I've shared this before. Listen, when, 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 when everything is at peace, and then you're praying, and suddenly the anointing of God comes to you, and all he says is, my son, fear not, I am with you. You should just go write it down somewhere that something is about to happen that has the capacity of shaking you. Oh, yes. That's why God is coming ahead of time to tell you, don't move. I am with you. Now, what are you supposed to do? Take hold of that word. You know, I already know that God is wisely reminding me in such a strong term. If you are wise and you understand the character of God, you should know that he's just come ahead of the devil right now because he's going to permit a trouble that will come your way very soon. And that trouble is surely going to come. When you see it coming, what do you do? Oh, now I see why God says it with me. And then you, you laugh. You say, Lord, you know we're going to go through this together. I will not be moved. And you are right. You are right through that situation. Like what Jesus told Peter. He said, Satan has desired to have you, but I have prayed for you. So that your faith will. Why didn't Jesus pray that his faith? Why didn't Jesus pray that Satan should not touch Peter at all? No, he didn't. Because God had to permit that for that time. Verse 13, verse 12 says, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. See your prayer points now? So don't stop at everybody thinking you're a spiritual person. Pray. You need help. You, you need help. What help? Holy Spirit, I need help. Help me interpret this realm. I am doing. See. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. What's Paul saying? He says, hey, I am. He's not saying don't pray. Don't people people use the scriptures and then begin to say hey, that even Paul said we should not be zealous about praying in tongues. Hey, you must pray in tongues. So you see, what God is seeking is that you you be a blessing to people, not just to yourself. So don't stay in that selfish place and, and oh I feel so spiritual right now. And you're you're a blessing to no one. If God is anointing you, it's because He wants you to bless others. So seek. Utterance, seek utterance that can be that can you can use to relate with people. That's what he's saying, so that you will be a source of edification to men. I pray that 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 will be your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the gift of the Spirit is being made manifest in your life, and you are being a blessing to people at your job, in your school, you know, in your business area, in your church, wherever you find yourself, in the marketplace. Be a blessing by the Spirit of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless your weekend. Let this be the best weekend you've ever had in your life. Praise God. Have the greatest weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.